Hello everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Informations Weekly Sync uh, for Monday the 15th of June 2020. I am Aking Brain, I will be your host. We are going to go through the list of uh, initiatives and then the uh, lesser initiatives and then questions and parking lots and bike shedding and all that good stuff. Um, so the first thing on the list uh, of high priority initiatives is upcoming and ship releases. Who has shipped something or is about to? Yeah, so last week we shipped the latest RC of Go IPFS 0.6. Um, that is out. Feel free to test it. And then we should be targeting a release of that um, this week. And the link is in the notes if you care to read more. Awesome. No other ship things. There's been no no JSIPFS stuff this week. Uh, the next one is content routing. Yeah, primary focus for this week. Uh, we're going to be working on the 0.6 release, so testing of that, and then we're also working on some uh, miscellaneous DHT improvements um, that will be landing in 0.7. Um, things like bootstrapping and uh, churn in the routing tables and stuff. Cool. Um, Subdomain gateway. Yep. So uh, on the base 36 front, uh, just before this meeting, uh, uh, library for supporting CIDs in JS uh, shipped with support for base 36. Um, I needed that to update CID data GFSAO. It also supports uh, base 36 now. Um, and go, uh, it was for some time, but it now supports a conversion from uh, arbitrary CID version to base 36. And all that is to accommodate those uh, ED25519 uh, keys. Um, apart from that, we got some review uh, PRs in review related to subdomains. One is for forwarded host and the second one is for redirect to a different uh, host name. <laughs> uh, both probably, like probably the first one, uh, so makes the second one redundant. Um, and there's a separate PR for in review for supporting wildcards. Uh, that's also from the Infura. Um, the idea is if some gateway operator wants to uh, create a separate namespaces, or like a private subdomain gateways per user, maybe to improve tracking or something. Uh, that that feature is uh, under review. Um, I did not do any significant progress on uh, the PR where we uh, tackle long CIDs uh, in subdomains. But I talked with some people. Uh, about potential UX ramifications, and I'm leaning into uh, a position that if we decide to do that, we'll probably need to show a, like, a temporary error page informing user that the CID is too long, and then give a link if user wants to explicitly rehash the root and load it from subdomain. Uh, that's like the only update I have on that one. And that's it from my end. If we are going to uh, get users to opt in for rehashing, we might as well just tell them rehash on your own and be done with it without adding extra complexity. Yeah, I mean, like, we sh uh, for sure we want to show uh, an error instead of silently rehashing stuff and redirecting people to a different CID. Uh, th uh, do, if, if we want to give a, that's like a button, for doing that automatically, that's like an open question. We may just ship error page first, and then if there's an actual need, we may deliver a rehashing later. It'd be really nice if there's some way to detect whether or not like you're loading something as like a main HTML resource on like a website versus you're just fetching something from a gateway. 
because like I think the most the gateway does two things. It's one a way to like serve static resources, in which case we don't care about the path gateway in that case. We could just like stop all JavaScript. Uh, the other thing it, it does is like it lets you actually view websites. Is there any way to tell like is this like a website or something like that? Well, if it's if it's HTML, it's a file ending with HTML, or if it's a directory with index HTML. No, but like I, I'm wondering, like, is there a way, to like, to like, if someone is visiting something that's like being loaded as an HTML page just in a frame or something like that? It's really you can, you can tell if user agent requested it, meaning browser, which is good enough signal, I think. Uh, it's okay signal. The problem is like, like we don't want to have a situation where like somebody uses a weird browser or change their user agent and suddenly they're insecure. Um, that would be bad. Um, I guess fine. We can use, in that case, we can just block JavaScript um, or like yeah, use the, the content policy to block JavaScript. Um, okay, or sorry, you could off topic. do, you can also do the error page for browsers that are weird or. No, but like the problem that what we're trying to do here is like, in context where you're not actually in a browser, I just want to serve you the content because you're asking for the content. And like, this might be like you included some static content in your website or like you're trying to fetch content from like a script or some local thing versus you're trying to load this thing in the web browser is like the root origin um, where you actually care about the having a safe origin. But we, we can talk about this later. Yeah, yeah. Cool, the next thing on the list is bits for publics. Yeah, so this week we uh, fixed a, uh, a race in Peer Manager to do with uh, connections. And then we're also working on refactoring BitSwap, uh, how it receives messages in order to make sure that um, we're not uh, missing, or occasionally we could get into a situation where uh, we ask for a want that has actually just been received. And so we either ask for it twice or we never receive it. Uh, so there's that and then we're also trying to kind of simplify how, how BitSwap works internally. Cool, uh, stream content-based chunking, researching freebies. Yeah, uh, no update uh, from the past week. Uh, I've been working on a lot of stuff for IPLD. Uh, I still plan to get to it around Wednesday, Thursday this week. So don't take it out docket yet, but no update. Fair enough. What's, uh, what's going on in Rustland? Yeah, uh, real quick update from us. The phase two work will be wrapping up this week. And we'll be submitting our milestone report there. Um, that will include get and cat. Um, and then the ad will be taken care of via another funding source, which is great. Um, and then just a reminder to everybody that the phase three ticket for suggestions or for next steps for us is still open. And the notes are in the uh, note. Or the link is in the notes, rather, in the crit pad. So pretty quick update here, that's all. Cool, uh, JS Lip P2P Rendezvous. Uh, yeah, no big update this week also for the rendezvous. Uh, basically, I started working on the Lip P2P signed peer records, which is a dependency both for rendezvous and the uh, gossip sub 1.1 work streams that are happening. Uh, so yeah, I, I expect this week to get an initial implementation of the signed peer records and then iterate on Jacob's feedback for the initial implementation of the rendezvous. And that's it. Cool, here are end the high priority updates. I project initiative updates here. Uh, next one's the Unix FS v1.5 in Go FS. Uh, yeah, so we cut. Um, wait, sorry, what was that? Unix FS v1.5 in Go Oh, FS. never mind. Kevin about that. Oh, I thought you were going to say we cut a release of it. No, no, sorry. Whenever I hear 0.5, I, I immediately jump to release. Oh, no, that was the last one. Fair enough. 
uh, moving on, migration to multi-hash keys in the block store. Um, so uh, I was working on the migration tool to unblock this um, and had a hell of a time uh, with index DB uh, transactions because you get like to do a migration, you get a query, you iterate over the things in the database um, and you mutate the database and index DB does not like that if you're you doing mutations outside of a transaction that basically kills the initial transaction uh, and I spent basically the whole week banging my head against that um, and I think we've actually decided to go back to data store level for the time being because it's all index db underneath it but it uses a slightly different paradigm to access it uh, which seems to be a better fit for doing these kind of operations um, so putting that drawing a line under that chapter of my life and uh, moving on um, to actually ship the migration tool which should happen hopefully in the next few days um, pinning system revamp is the same because uh, it's the both of them are blocked on being able to do migrations between different versions in the data store. That is that. Um, the next initiative is the shared IPFS node. Um, so uh, I got all the IPFS doc tests, interface tests passing now, except few that I have disabled. Um, which I have disabled because some of them are doing uh, some normalization between CID pass plus, sorry, CID plus path thing, which I don't have implemented yet. So those are disabled other than everything is passing on my machine. However, I having hard time to get any of this passing on uh, CI because there are a lot of intermediate failures from what I can tell. So my tests never even get to run. Things get aborted earlier. So I'll be looking into that. Um, however, to get there, there are a bunch of other libraries involved to get the changes into. Uh, there in the nodes, there's a kind of tree of those. Some of them are have already made it to the release. Some of them are in the review. Some of them reviewed, but have not been made to the release yet. Uh, and one other thing. Uh, last week, I had a discussion about uh, maybe simplifying the interface and switching to the new IPLD stack uh, versus using the old one for this work. Uh, and that still awaits on consensus and there's a link handy there. That's it. That is the end of the other initiatives. Uh, moving on to the rest of the stuff. So design review proposals, would anybody like to? Do a design review or ask for a design review. A design review. Blockers and asks. Anyone blocked? Um, I'm sort of not quite blocked, but almost blocked by the so consensus on the API. So at the moment, I'm implementing to on top of older API, but if we switch to the new IPLD stack, some of this work will be rendered irrelevant. So ideally I can get a consensus sooner than um, before I'm done with everything and then start over. Uh, I'll put a link there too. Uh, who would be uh, like stakeholders uh, if you'd like to? Um, Alex? And IPLD team, Michael. I think Michael seemed to be in favor, but I don't know, something more real. I, so at the meeting, we decided that we will all propose a specific API and we'll make a call from or continue conversation from there. I made a proposal. I have not heard anything back except from uh, Streetbox team. Uh, I, I noticed we got a call on Thursday, maybe we could like time box this decision uh, make, make i call organized a Thursday. call for that uh, but yeah i'm happy to have another call or do whatever really no no if, if that's call is already for that that's perfect yeah okay moving on uh questions Parking lot. Uh, Stabilian is stepping down as the guy PFS maintainer. Adina is stepping up as the new maintainer. I mean, 
I'm moving over to Filecoin Actors. Get to get one step closer to IPLD. I'm still gonna be around, but Adina is, is going to be taking over. You you will be missed. I won't miss any of you. Yeah, I'll miss y'all. That's so sweet. Uh, congratulations all around. Uh, cool. Um, anything else? We've burned through this meeting in record time. We've got a whole 10 minutes that we can have back and spend it wisely or unwisely. It's up to you. Cool. In that case, I will call this meeting to a close. This has been the IPFS Core Weekly Sync for Monday the 15th of June 2020. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, see you on the internet. Bye.